Hey, uh, it's been a while. Um, so I figured I just will sit in front of the camera and talk, and it doesn't matter if everything is not amazing. <sighs> yes, it is winter, and last year I just disappeared, I think, for months on end, and uh, I nearly have done the same. I'm about two episodes missing, so that's about six weeks. Um, and I just decided that, no, I'm going to come and sit and talk to you guys, because I miss you, and I miss recording. I just, um, yeah, my energy drops a lot over Christmas, and then the idea of having to sit and think and talk and, and, and edit and upload just starts to kind of get, oh, it's too much. No, I'm here. We're doing it. So, um, it's going to be less organised. <laughs> Uh, then I would prefer, because I am a perfectionist, he says, picking up bits of paper off the floor. We're going for a no-edit jobby again, we're just, I'm just going to uh, chat away. Probably we'll get interrupted at some point by the front door, so um, there'll be a cut or something, but I'm not going for anything fancy. So, first project I've picked up is one I'm currently working on, which is a beautiful sock in this amazing yarn. Oh, and I'm pulling stitches off the needle because I'm trying to show it off. And uh, it's on my teeny tiny nine inch circulars. It's not that so small. <laughs> so um, I do like these now. Uh, I'm enjoying the lack of fuss in the bag. The ease with which you can just pick up and start working on a project. Um, they don't move around a lot so I've never actually lost stitches off the needles unless it's me pulling on the sock. Um, so if I pull on it, um, either whilst I'm mucking about with it like now or if I try and try the sock on and I'm carefully trying to, but I usually end up pulling a couple of stitches off what have you, but it's not a big deal just to pick them back up. Um, I did have to rip this back in fact because uh, when I was over at the Countess of Blaise Saturnalia party awesome fun. Um, hi guys, if anyone's watching from there. Um, I counted how many stripes I thought I was going to need for the right length and then when I measured, borrowed someone's measuring tape and measured it, I'd gone way over. So I'm just about ready to do the toe on this. This is a, a sock minus the toe. Uh, the colourway is, I believe, pheasant. It's the West Yorkshire Spinners signature four ply and it's their bird's um, birds one, but they just still give it a number, not a name, so you have to sort of check it with the, the names they give it on the websites or what have you, but I'm pretty sure this one's pheasant, it looks like a pheasanty kind of colour range compared to the others anyway. Um, it's beautiful, it's really interesting, it goes red, um, kind of burnt orange and then light brown, which look quite similar, and then a deeper blue and a, a sort of a dark green, so that's really nice colours. On there. Interspersed with the little sort of black and white checks and what have you, which they seem to have on all of the bird yarns, or at least all the ones in the first uh, set. Bullfinch and Blue Tit and all of that. I haven't double double checked that, but I think they all have that kind of pattern in between the different colours for the birds. I have done about two inches cuff, about four inches stockinette, a fish lips kiss heel. I did try playing around with it a bit and doing German short rows instead of the, oh what should you call them, twin stitch, um, st twin stitches for the short rows. Um, but I didn't really understand how to do German shot rows, uh, so I was kind of half making it up a bit as I went along, and then trying to substitute them into another pattern. It worked fine, um, there's nothing wrong with the heel or anything, um, and there's no big gaping holes, which is always nice, because they, they often happen otherwise. Uh, and it all seems to fit fine, so, you know, me, it'll be fine. Um, and then I shall just stick a toe on that and start my second sock. And this one is living in my beautiful moon bag by Pine Anne, which is uh, my friend Catty's uh, little business. She does knitting designs on Ravelry as well. Um, her Ravelry name is Knit So Crochet, 
um, her shop name is Pi, as in P-I, the mathematical construct, and Anne, as in the name Anne. Um, yeah, and that's a little moon bag that I got as a present. Yeah. So, project number one. Project number two, forgetting about the one that fell on the floor earlier. These aren't in a particular order, I literally am just picking them up and going, right, what is it I've not talked about? <laughs> what did I do on these since the last spoke to you? So, these are another pair of rainbow socks! <laughs> Yay! Um, there's no stitch marker on these at all, uh, or progress marker, so I think that is probably because uh, I've started and made these in the last six weeks since I last spoke to you, which isn't exactly unlikely for a pair of socks. So this is what it looks like. Uh, they are basically a matching pair, which is kind of cool. Um, I did have to do some colour work. Uh, on the yarn to make this happen because this is um, the Shoppel Wool Zauber Ball in Tropical Fish um, and so in order to make all the bits and pieces line up I have all these bits that I had to cut out and sort of make it all line up what have you so I've, I've ended up with um, a couple of matching semi-rainbow mini uh, mini balls of yarn that go sort of yellow to blue and I've got these bunches of cuts off of red and what have you and then I've got a separate ball of the dark blue all on its own so yeah <laughs> that's all from chopping it into pieces and what have you but the actual um, the actual sock itself from cuff to toe is one piece of yarn and then the heels are uh, another bit of yarn because um, I was looking at how much each sort of colour ran from red to red it wasn't quite enough for a sock so I thought right okay well I've got these two half runs of rainbows kind of red to blue or or um, a sort of red to, to the light blue or something it didn't quite it wasn't quite a full rainbow but I thought well if I use the red end it'll really pop the heel when it's in the dark blue patch so had a bit of fun doing some colour working on that and making it all come together. For some reason, um, should I do these toe up? I think I, no. I'm not sure. I did them the other way round and the fact that they match at the toes rather than the cuffs makes me think I probably did it toe up. Oh, I, no. Yeah. If I did it toe up, yeah, where the increases happen, that looks about right. It's not a decrease, that's an increase. Not an upside down decrease. So yeah. So I did it toe up. Um, yeah. And it started off matching really, really well. But the length of the different colour segments, if I get the heels lined up, there we go, wasn't the same. So where is this, the bottom one goes green, yellow, red. This one goes green, yellow, orange. <laughs> oh, it doesn't quite get to red. Um, so, you know, I sh given that I don't like my socks too much, too much, that's cool. I don't mind. But at the same time, it's a bit like, okay, this is commercially dyed yarn. There shouldn't be that much going on with it. <laughs> It'd be a bit odd like that. But yeah. So now I can... Oh, I'll tell you what. Where are my sock blockers? I didn't think of that. There we go. I should be showing you guys my socks on my sock blocker, shouldn't I? So just very quickly, he says, completely failing to manipulate the sock blockers in any sensible fashion. Do, 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 do. Let's get the sock sitting on this nicely. There we go. That's what it looks like on a sock blocker. Ta-da! So yeah, and then pull it back off. <laughs> so I need to um, sort out what we're going to do with all these odds and ends and stuff. I do keep... Um, little bags of like scraps and what have you. So I have scraps that are less than 5 grams, scraps that are around 10 grams, scraps that are around 20 grams, and then sort of half skeins and stuff that are like 50, 60 grams. Um, <laughs> that's Stitch, if you can hear him in the background wanting to be let outside. Not happening. Um, so I'll, get, I'll sort them out at some point. But I do think it's kind of fun because I've got two little matching ones. I'm like, ooh, what could I do with two little matching balls that are probably like 20 grams or something each? If that, maybe between them. <sighs> I'm talking fast, aren't I? Yeah, whatevs. So, oh, that's the pattern for it. Uh, 
Oh yeah, I used, I followed the spacious OMG heel pattern for those socks, I forgot to say, didn't I? Uh, um, which is by... Uh, da, 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 da. Megan Williams, thank you, brain. Stocking at zombies, you know. Not famous at all, no, Megan. Nobody's heard of Megan. <laughs> brain. Fail moment. Um, yeah, and I basically just followed the pattern. Uh, to, to see what it was like. I, I have gone back to Fish Lips Kiss for my current socks because the OMG heel wasn't particularly more spacious or anything for me, didn't fit any particularly better I don't think and was a bit more work to do. I found it a bit more awkward to do it um, but we'll see. Uh, when I've actually worn them for a bit I might change my mind about the socks. We'll see. Okay, so this one is a really quick little project that I did when I went to Yarndale, I think it was, and I got to see Jolie from Jolie's Kitchen. And so I bought the Learning to Tech Edit course from her just to check my skills out and everything, which was awesome. I have now done all of that and I'm now tech editing, so you know, if you know a designer who needs a tech editor, hit me up. Um, and uh, I also bought from her some hand spun yarn and I got a green finch pattern because Jolie was very sweet and gave it to me. So here is Jolie's pattern made in Jolie's yarn. Ta-da! Isn't that gorgeous? That's really cool. I'm kind of jealous because I think sometimes these things, the contrast show up better on the video than they do in real life. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. But then actually... It's not so obvious to the eye in person. Um, I'm not going to put it on because um, it'll mess my hair up and I'm feeling a little bit vain today. Well, I'm feeling like a complete mess and my hair's the only thing that isn't a complete wreck, so I'm not going to wreck my hair. Um, but yeah, look, that's what it looks like. <laughs> uh, it's really nice. I think uh, I've got the label that says it's 100 uh, odd yards of Shetland wool, was in the saying. So it's Shetland wool, Aaron Bulky Way, and the pattern calls for... Um, 104 yards of Malabrigo Chunky. Um, now I've definitely not used 104 yards of this, if there's 109, because there's way more than 5 yards left. Um, but that may just be that I'm knitting tighter or what have you, I don't know. I did try and do a really nice, loose... Uh, either cast on or bind off, I'm not sure which end it is now. Um, and it's a little tight at one end, which is usually going to be my cast on. Um, it looks like a cast on rather than a bind off, that looks more like a bind off. So yeah, I think the cast on I used was a little tight still. Which is always frustrating. Um, I still struggle a bit with that. I've got my book, Bind Offs and Cast Ons, um, which is awesome. Um, but I still struggle a bit with finding something where it doesn't feel like it's the actual cast-on or bind-offs that's restricting it. No, cast-ons. The bind-offs, uh, I'm pretty much sussed with. I'm happy. I pretty much always use... Um, no, that's not right, is it? I almost, I almost always use the old Norwegian cast-on, and that's usually super stretchy enough. I don't know if I just didn't use it on this one, or what, I don't know. But that's definitely the bind off, and that's really loose. But I think the bind off for this I did, the Jenny surprisingly stretchy. Where you get the extra yarn overs and stuff, and you can kind of tell, because it kind of creates a slight raised... Uh, it was a slightly raised feeling, which is fine, because it fits. The, the rest of the yarn is, is not... It's not tight, you know, you can see see through, so it's very much in keeping. Very nice, so thank you, Jolie, for that. Um, uh, for the, the, pattern, the gift of the pattern, as well as for letting me buy your gorgeous yarn and all your help with the tech, editing, uh, tech editing stuff, which has been awesome. I'm having so much fun with that, guys. Seriously. So much fun. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, let's, ooh, yes, we've got this one in here. Oh, I've not put it on the needles. Well, never mind. 
when it's finished you'll get to see it. Because um, this is on the small needles for knitting in the round as opposed to my super long shawl cable on like two metre cables where I can show off all the lace and what have you because this is the Even Star Shawl. Um, it is progressing somewhat. I've not even bothered to think about when where it was last time. Um, it's been way too long. <laughs> I just assume it's gone on a fair bit. So you can kind of see the centre there. Um, and if I do something like this... I get it up on the... It's not great, but you can just about see... Yeah, I mean, you can see some of the patterning going on there against the white wall. It's not the, the best background for it, really, against... Kind of, oh, my forehead! My forehead's pretty big. You could do it again. <laughs> there we go, that's not too bad, is it? <laughs> oh dear, big shiny forehead! Um, but yeah, so I've done the first and second... Yes, I've done the first and second chart. I am on the very repetitive bit at the beginning of chart three, um, without giving too much away. Uh, and I've done about a third of that. So, um, it's pretty cool. I mean, I, I do love this. Um, and my sister will very much uh, enjoy it when it's done. <laughs> So uh, I shall keep going with this and finish this off at some point, but there's not a rush on it. Uh, the, the deadline <laughs> that I was challenged to pass long ago, um, it wasn't really going to happen, was it? Not with the way I get so easily distracted anyway. And then last but not least, we have... Ah, yes. Um, I finished the first sock of the You Know You Want to Dance sock pattern by Lisa Tompko, who is Sparkle Punk or Sparkle Punk Lisa online. Um, and it's this really cool design. Um, it's, kind of, it's, a, it's a design that's shown better um, by laying the sock flat. Uh, so if I hold it up, and you can see the patterning in there, but it's designed to be done on really busy yarn like this. Um, so it kind of looks a bit crazy, and if I put it on a sock blocker, you can have a look at what it looks like, sort of stretched out slightly. Um, so this pattern was designed for crazy, crazy yarn. You can see the uh, photo on the pattern. You know, it was designed on crazy yarn, which is why I picked this yarn for the pattern to give it a go. When I was chatting with Lisa and she told me about it, and I thought oh, that'd be kind of cool. It does have a big patch of pooling at the front, that's just because um, some of the shades of colours are a little bit too similar. And so it's actually several different colours, but they they look too similar and they, they pool much more than when these are crisscrossed. And so you end up with this, this kind of look going on, whereas, you know, down here on the toe I've got kind of that striping thing happening, and then you start to do the the patterning here and, and the obviously the gauge all changes and everything. Um, but I really like um, the look of it. It was quite fun following a chart um, to do a sock because I tend to just, you know, I tend not to pattern the feet and the leg, I just do stockinette. However, getting the gauge right for this didn't really happen. It I can wear it, but it's a bit tight and it's a bit short. Um, and I don't know if I'm enamoured enough to go for the second sock. So it's not so much that I'm suffering from second sock syndrome, which is where I want the socks, but I just haven't cast on the second sock. It's more, I'm kind of contemplating, will I actually ever wear these socks if I bother to knit the second one? Um, I think the answer is going to be no. Um, so I'm not sure what's going to happen. They may just, it may just sit for a while and then eventually get ripped out. Which is a shame, but at least, you know, I can make some notes on the pattern and then I'll know for next time. So that's all the projects that I've got going on at the moment, uh, I think. Yes, the other stuff that I've got still sort of ongoing uh, is these two. I don't think there's another one in there, no. So this one is the bag. Um, 
I'll show it again even though I've not really done anything with it so if you guys remember it's this one with the really cool pattern on the front and I've done the front and back and I'm working on the lid uh, and that really can be as long as I want it to be so I could effectively stop there but I was going to try and go a certain length I think maybe a bit longer like a couple more inches or something for the the flap over the top because um, it'll just be open topped I'm not going to do any fasten fastenings or anything like that um, but once that's done I mean all I have to do for the knitting wise is seam up the sides um, but I think I'm going to have to line it with some fabric because otherwise things like keys and what have you will just poke through the bag because it's the, the knitting is too loose um, and last but not least is my uh, Corridon's jumper or sweater depending on which continent you're in and um, this is the sleeves that I finished I finished both sleeves so you can see both of them there uh, I've done the front and back and the sleeve so the next step in the instruction was to start seaming stuff and for some unknown reason I just you know it this project stalled at that point <laughs> yeah I'm not in a seeming mood at the moment every time I look at it I'm just like oh I'm gonna have to work out how this thing fits together and it's just effort and given that even just sitting down and talking is a lot of effort at the moment seeming isn't going to happen is it so that is my current uh, progress in everything so after that it would be stash love um, and I can't be bothered to even pause the recording and uh, edit so you're just going to get my butt for a second while I start here yeah. go and grab some yarns because of course there's some stash love you think you think I went six weeks and didn't buy yarn? <laughs> Have you not been watching the previous episodes? <laughs> so yes, um, I was talking about the West Yorkshire Spinners birds, and I said the first lot. Um, oops, sorry, and that's because they came out with a second lot. Ta-da! So there's some more bird yarns, and have me a quick look. Um, yes, this one has the grey and white. Um, little checked pattern in between the stripes but this one has blue and white and this one has blue and white as well so they're slightly different on these two new ones uh, I can tell you off the top of my head this one is Kingfisher because I love it you know no no prizes for guessing why <laughs> blue and orange um, this one oh now I think you see, when I saw the colourway, I was like, oh, that should be, like, um, a lesser spotted woodpecker or something, because the black and white and the red makes me think of that. But it's not. It's a finch again. Um, and I want to say chaffinch, but I don't think that's right, so I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but you can find out online. I've not written it on the labels or anything. Uh, and then for this one, I really can't remember. Maybe like peacock. That could I, that might be right actually. It might be peacock. I think they did bring one out called peacock. So, some kind of finch with peacock and kingfisher, I think. Uh, but I also got at the same time their Christmas one, which is the same kind of design. So it stripes of colour by the looks of it with uh, what looks to be dark green and white checkered uh, little checkered in, uh, bits in between. So again, this one's not sort of that dark grey and white. Um, I haven't done anything with it for Christmas, it just will be a nice colourway as and when I knit it up. And I got these all from Brit Yarns and when I got them she was doing free shipping for orders over £30 and these were like I think £7.25 each or something which basically means that it came out at £29 and I was like oh the shipping, if I can get something for less than the cost of the shipping but more than a pound I'd save money. So I also have a tiny little ball of some bright orange Jameson and Smith. Um, it's just two ply real Shetland wool. Um, and basically this was just, it cost less than the shipping. So I saved money by having this as well. <laughs> so I don't have any plans for it. Um, who knows what will happen to it. Uh, but yes, <laughs> I have that as well. But as you can tell, I am really liking the West Yorkshire Spinner stuff at the moment. Um, it seems to be very... Uh, trendy right now, um, possibly be after the the whole blue tit blue tit blue tit um, uh, scenario fiasco scene thing meme. I can't think of the word. 
um, on Bakery Bears podcast. And they suddenly started talking about it a lot, and I think uh, that seems to have uh, impacted it. As much as my love of the bird yarns and telling you all about them as well, may have contributed to dinner in a tiny, tiny way. Uh, but yeah, that's it in terms of stash enhancement. Um, <laughs> he says, reaching for the next set of stash enhancement, because I forgot. <laughs> when I went to Countess of Blaze Saturnalia party, um, if you don't know who Countess Blaze is, you obviously haven't been watching my podcast for very long. Uh, she is an indie dyer based up Manchester way, um, who does really gorgeous saturated colours. Um, and check her out, she's now got a shop front, a little shop store in, um, in Manchester, so her dye studio and then a little shop front for it as well. It's awesome! That's the way you had the party and it was amazing. Uh, but anyway, there were some door prizes and stuff and we had a competition. Well, it wasn't really a competition, it was just a fun game um, to come up with different names for Countess of Blaze colourways. Um, so most of us kind of knew what that meant in terms of like, you know, the kind of names that she has for her colourways. So the, some of the famous ones are things like Nerds Prefer Their Rainbows Darker, um, uh, was it Frog Pond or something? And oh, off the top of my head I'm suddenly going blank. But anyway, there's a whole bunch of really cool names and some of them are based after music and bands and some of them are kind of just geeky things and so on and so forth. So anyway, I have I enjoy doing things like that immensely. So I just created a massive amount of names, but each one was an entry. So when they started pulling the door prizes, uh, I got the first one, and then I got the second one, <laughs> and then I said, "Please just skip me if you keep pulling me out." And I was kind of gutted because the final prize they drew was this massive hamper of chocolate and stuff, and I was like. <gasps> <laughs> they'd drawn that first, but of course they'd save it to the end. I missed out on that, but I did get instead some really awesome stuff, so I'm not jealous, really honest. You know who you are who walked off with the with the chocolate hamper. The um so what I did get was a little prize do donated by Isla of Brit Yarn, who I was just talking about because that's where I bought my bird yarns from. Uh, and I got in it two skeins, two lots of 100 grams of DK Wensleydale sheep, long wool, Wensleydale long wool, um, from the Wensleydale long wool sheep shop. <laughs> um, a bit of a mouthful. Uh, but that looks very cool. And these are lovely, sort of Christmassy red. I wonder if they would actually go with. They're maybe not quite right to go with go with this, but they're very close. You could probably get away with it. I mean, in this kind of lighting, what have you, it's hard to tell. But, very nice. And they came in a cool little Japanese mill bag. Hey! Which is one of the kinds of bags I don't have now. Having gone from my first podcast where I was like, I don't have any bags, to now I have all the bags. Um... So these came in, they came in the little bags. It holds, you know, it holds two skeins of wool quite nicely, just like so. And then if you've not used a Japanese knot bag, the idea is you put the long handle through the short one, and then you can put it over your wrist or what have you, and it holds it kind of closed, but you can still knit from it because there's gaps and stuff. So it's a really cool little design, and it's really easy to open and close. And I don't know if it's if it's true for this one, but often with Japanese knot bags. Yes, I think that works. Often you can turn them inside out. So then you've got the internal fabric, it's your external fabric. Um, the... No, oh, it does kind of work actually. I think it might have been done like that on purpose. The only thing is there is a little tag on, on one side, which is originally the outside, that says made exclusively for bridgeyarn.co.uk. Um, but it's kind of fun. Personally, I think I would have the stripes on the outside anyway. Um, Unless I was feeling particularly floral that day. But I'm not really a floral kind of guy. Um, so, less likely to happen, shall we say. Uh, so that was the first door prize. And then the second one, let's get these out so I can show you guys, was a really cool uh, little set of stitch markers 
by my friend Adzreel. <laughs> Looks really pretty written down, really quite hard to say, Adzreel. Or at least I just find I have to enunciate it very clearly, otherwise it just comes out as Adzreel. <laughs> um, but she made these uh, for her, well, from her, for her, she makes these kinds of stitch markers, it's probably more accurate, for her uh, Etsy shop. So let's see if I can hold these up. So there's five markers and a sort of end of round marker kind of thing. You can see they're one slightly longer than the others. How pretty are they? And they come on a little bonus stitch marker as well, which I always think is cool. I'm like, yay! Because I love these stitch markers. They're useful for when I'm doing something where I don't want dangly beads and things getting in the way. Um, and that's from... Uh, Adriel's shop knitting and penguins. So yay! How cool is that? Because um, Adriel loves penguins, basically, and knitting. So knitting and penguins. So I got those in a cute little baggie. So if you are looking for some uh, stitch markers, that's another person you can go and check out on Etsy and see if you would like to uh, buy from them. I think that's all the stash enhancement for this time. Um, so that leaves me with questions uh, which I haven't looked at the forum for. So let's have a quick look at the forum. On my nice new tablet. <laughs> I bought it so that I could do my tech editing work on it and it's awesome for that uh, but it's also awesome just for everything else. Ravelry! Which unsurprisingly is like one of my uh, bookmarks on the front page. It's like, are you going to Ravelry again, James? Yes. Yes, I am. Now, why was I coming on Ravelry? It was to, oh yes, it was to look and see if anyone's posted any questions since I last looked. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Oh, my poor. My poor group is so quiet, no one's done anything in it for several weeks, which isn't surprising because I haven't done anything for a lot longer than that. Uh, but no, there's nothing posted since I last looked, so that's fine. My poor Ravelry group is looking a little bit abandoned there. I'm sorry. Okay, so this this is the cubby hole that I keep going to. It's the cubby hole where I keep all my podcasting stuff. Um, so, let's grab my other bits and pieces. Okay. I just couldn't be bothered to bring it all over when I started recording. I think in my head I was like, oh, I'll stop it, and da da da, and I was just like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm just, just going to hit record and go. Ah, uh, stash from. Oh, I've already shown that. Yeah, that's, it. that's last episode. That's fine. I'm just looking at notes going, did I write myself some notes? Okay, what question am I on? I don't know. It's been that long. Um... Yeah, I've completely lost track. So, let's, let's, let's have another pause moment and I'll just have a look and see what it was I did last time. Uh, in fact, I don't think I don't think I wrote it in my notes, did I? So, uh, whatever. Even if I did, I'm just going to go with whatever I think is right. So let's have a look. I'm pretty sure I did. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Because I think I remember talking about my career path. Did I talk about what profession would I not like to do? I think so. If only because the answer to that would just basically be anything that I didn't enjoy. And I think I talked about that a bit previously. I can't remember. So I'll do this one and the next one. Um, because it is really simple. Uh, as, I, as I've talked about before, I, I do have a eccentric, eclectic uh, career path. Um, from studying mathematics to working customer support for a computer software to being a professional contemporary dancer to now being a... A technical editor of knitting patterns. Um, the 
you know, what would I not like to do is just anything where I don't enjoy it, where I'm not feeling like I'm contributing and I'm uh, appreciated. So I could kind of do anything if I felt I was contributing towards something and my contribution was meaningful and acknowledged. That would, that would probably be enough for me to do a job, basically. Um, so I don't tend to rule stuff out. I'm just like, yeah, sure. People tend to go to me, James, why don't you do this? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's how I got all my other jobs. Um, if, ah, okay, so number 10. Oh, okay, yeah. If heaven exists, what would you like hear, to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Okay, so this one's a little bit controversial because it's a religion question. Um, and the first thing that comes to mind is an awesome Stephen Fry quote. Uh, which probably tells you everything you need to know about me straight off anyway. So, I, I am not a religious person, and I think, uh, I think someone's beliefs and their religion and whether or not God exists is a personal thing, and it is a decision for an individual to make, and... Uh, whether or not God exists and what your personal beliefs are cannot be right or wrong. They just are what you believe and that's fine. I do however have an unpleasant history shall we say with people who don't understand that your right to have your own beliefs doesn't extend past your own head. <laughs> um, that people people who think that what they individually believe should somehow impact the rest of the world necessarily just because they believe it. Um, and you know that's that's just not how it works. Uh, I think everybody has equal rights and therefore you can't have rights that overrule someone else's. <laughs> so just as everyone has rights to their own beliefs, uh, everyone that's not you has rights to beliefs that don't agree with yours. <laughs> um, which I don't think is particularly controversial, um, but when stated like that, uh, but obviously, you know, it, it can be a subject that people get quite worked up about, and unfortunately um, it gets warped because people haven't been taught how to interact with other people who don't believe the same as them <laughs> in a positive way just in a negative way so um, if I was to be very truthful then if heaven exists and God exists and the pearly gates exist all of which have to exist for this question to work. And then I arrive at the pearly gates, all of which is an assumption in the first place, because it's not guaranteed. What would I like to hear God say when I arrive? The answer to that would be, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, that's what I think God should say. I think God should apologise. <laughs> However, um, that's because that particular god would not be a god that I recognise or understand. Um, in my own belief, if I were to use the term god um, and to have faith in god, uh, it, the idea of heaven and pearly gates and even afterlife just wouldn't exist. None of that makes any sense to me. Um, I, I would use the word God only as a way of relating to somebody who is religious when I want to talk about love. So for me, God and love are the same thing. If you can replace the word God uh, or an equivalent, so Jesus, Muhammad, um, Allah, mm, well, okay, no, that's controversial. Muhammad isn't the equivalent of God, he's a prophet. But, um, yeah, so anybody making some kind of commandment, shall we say, um, if, if, you know, if you want to say such and such says this, or you should do this because so and so says so, if you can replace that with love says so, or because of love, or love believes, or love 
uh, blank, whatever, and it still makes sense, then we're probably going to agree. If you replace it, uh, replace the word God, etc., with the word love, and it doesn't make sense, for example, uh, God hates anything, <laughs> insert your favourite slur, um, translates to love, hates, whatever. Well, that just doesn't make sense. The whole point is, God doesn't hate anything God can't hate. In my world, because God is love, love doesn't hate anything, love loves everything. So, translate that to God loves, insert your favourite slur here, and we've got at least some way, some, something to talk about, and then we just have to work on your choice of language. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, religion is, a, is, is something that I have quite a lot of opinion on, but I also you know, aware that a lot of other people are going to disagree with me, so I don't want to upset anybody, or um, have anyone feel like I am disrespecting them, because that's not my intention. Uh, so yeah, but the honest straight answer, for, straightforward answer would be sorry, because if heaven actually exists and the pearly gates exist, then that impacts just your whole, my whole world view, and that would completely change my understanding of theology, and I just think it's inconsistent uh, with this world and therefore there would be something gone horribly, horribly wrong and therefore the almighty creator would have an apology to make. That's the logic, in a, in a nutshell. Okay, so there's one more question left which uh, I shall save for next time and how about I get a pen and I will just make a note of... Uh, that's the next one I've got left, there we go. So now I don't have to worry about forgetting next time. Sorry about my thing beeping. For some reason, putting a bit of paper on it suddenly made it wake up. <laughs> What's that about? Okay, uh, so that's me questions from Topher. Thank you, Topher. They're keeping me going for a long time, especially when I have massive gaps between podcasts. Apologies. The other thing to do is the giveaway draw which I haven't prepped for at all, but I'm pretty sure that no one's entered since the last podcast. So I can just quickly have a look on here again, I've got the, uh, I've got the group up already so it won't take me a second. And my last entry is, uh, oops, no, that was page two. <laughs> was number 40. Oh, okay, so no, I have had some entries since I last drew it up. So, I'll just quickly add these on the end. Do, 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 do. It'll only take me a second, because there's only a few entries. But there's a few more. Uh, these are all from November. <laughs> which <laughs> That's how long it's been since I podcasted. Entered in November and only just getting around to it. Uh, mm, mm, mm. I just use a quick shorthand basically, this is what I'm doing here, to make sure that I've not accidentally carried someone twice because they've been, like some people wrote comments and what have you, so I just quickly make sure that everyone's got one individual entry. And there we go, last one. Cool. So, there are 40, no, 36, there's 36 entries, so I shall go to random.org, and I shall do 1 to 36, and if I get one that's already been drawn, I'll just pull again. This is what I usually do off camera, there's no, you know, no fan facts, like if you don't trust me, you don't trust me, big deal. Okay, we have a number. And that relates to post number, because, you know, not all the posts are consecutive, so... Uh, post number 22, who is... Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Near the bottom of the page... Ah, oh, Angie's hip! <laughs> Yay! Angie, uh, so it's somebody I actually know, <laughs> which is always nice. Um, so, uh, the two that have gone already are Lost Lorien and Star Trek Into Darkness, which does mean, I'm afraid, you get your third choice uh, of Warlock. Um, I did notice that actually 
out of all of them, Los Lorien and Into Darkness, where people gave a preference, did seem to be uh, generally the top two. And I don't know if, the, if it's because the names are more obviously nerdy, like one's Lord of the Rings and one's Star Trek, versus one sort of being just D&D, &D, kind of fantasy, warlocky, but nothing specific. And... Uh, oh, I was saying that, one person did put it down as their second choice. Um, but generally speaking, it didn't it didn't get picked as first choice by by anyone. So I'm not sure why. But uh, this now means I have no excuse uh, to, to get my butt in gear. I still haven't given the first one. I still haven't posted the first one off. Yeah, and it's been six months since my last podcast. So it's eight oh, six months, six weeks, six eight weeks since I drew it. I'm so sorry. I have just had a really naff couple of months, to be honest. So. I know you guys are super, super lovely and caring and just want me to be happy and aren't mad at me at all. So I'm not worried. Um, but it still sucks when you're trying to kind of do nice things and then you realise you haven't done the nice thing that you said you were going to do and it's been eight weeks that you've been trying to do it. So here is uh, Warlock, which is this beautiful green sparkly. A little reminder, it is on the Linitium X Machina Glitter Sock. Excuse me. <coughs> I can't quite do the um, um, show my Lynn Maya no sneeze where she does this look and she goes right I'm not going to sneeze now. She's trained as a singer you see so she knows she has to be able to not sneeze mid performance. Uh, it is 70% merino, 25% nylon, 5% stellina and it's 100 grams or 400 meters of sock yarn of um, four ply or what have you. Um, beautiful beautiful stuff. So, if you haven't already gone and had a look at Linitium X Machina's new website, do go and check her out. It is gorgeous stuff. Um, if you remember, I got some vacuum-packed yarns. Um, and one I bought and one I actually won as a prize. They were both Linitium X Machina, and it's just so cool when you get vacuum-packed yarn in the post. I just think that's awesome. Apparently she's not the only person that does it, but, you know, if you just want the novelty value, you can go and order some from Linitium X Machina. Um, so that is number three uh, and that is Warlock. I'm just making a quick note. And that means I'm kind of done. <laughs> I can just get it done. Yeah, so I've been super speedy chatting away and I've probably still spoken for like an hour or something ridiculous. But um, I can't think of anything else, so I'm just going to try and ramble something into a close. I can't see anything left in my pod. And yeah, I've had a haircut since uh, I last recorded, so my hair is shorter. I have had it cut. Um, I think I might get a bit more cut off again, um, because we erred on the longer side with the hairdresser, obviously. That makes more sense. Um, and I think I might go and just, because uh, I wanted it to sit sort of more on my shoulders and it, when I just wash it and then brush it out and leave it to hang, it hangs a little lower. So when I style it up, if I put some product in, then, then it does um, sit up a little higher, but I think I might just take another inch or something off and see how it is. So. But that's nice, I've actually had a haircut for Christmas and I like it, so that's good. Uh, so yeah. Um, I'm going to sign off. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your patience in waiting for me to get around to doing this episode. Um, I've not heard from the person from the second draw yet. Uh, so the last last episode I drew out the second uh, Linity Max Machina yarn. I've not heard from them. And get in touch with your details so I can send you the yarn. Um, with it having been so long, uh, I need, but I've only, but only one episode. I do need to give whoever it was that got drew drawn last time um, a chance to catch up. So maybe they watch this episode and go and check it out. Um, so next episode, if I still haven't heard from them, I'll think about redrawing it just because otherwise it'll have been sitting around for months and nobody will have said anything. But you know, I know. I'm not promising or anything at the moment, I'm just verbally thinking it out loud. Right, uh, 
yeah, I love you guys. As always, it's always fun to come and chat, and I'm glad that I actually just sat down and did it, because as always, it's never as hard as I think it's going to be, is it? Right. My completely unedited butt is now going to go and upload this to YouTube. Bye, guys. Love you.